as educators, that's something that we're really passionate about is making something that is realistic and achievable for you as a patient and making that sustainable. Otherwise, it's not going to last. Nutrition has a major impact on the prevention and management of type 2 diabetes and the key thing is giving information to physicians to help manage diabetes with their patients and that's a major role with the ADA. And joining me now to talk about the guidelines in nutrition are two experts with the ADA and thank you both for joining me. Um, let's first talk about how big a part of the type 2 diabetes treatment in nutrition is. So nutrition is kind of a key component of managing diabetes because nutrition and what you eat impacts your blood sugar from meal to meal every day. So how should physicians talk about nutrition to their patients? Obviously from the very start I'm gathering, yes? Yeah, day absolutely. one. I think day one, food is the foundation really of who we are as people, right? Food is social, food is life sustaining. Um, so cultural. Cultural, yeah. Food plays a major role in patients um, with diabetes and as Sasha mentioned, um, so directly impacting blood glucose values, it's important to address that I think from day one. Let's talk about the change in nutrition. Um, we're talking about low carb, but that doesn't mean no carb necessarily. So why don't we talk about that? Absolutely. Um, a lot of what we hear when we hear low carb, a lot of people do think that means no carb. And you know, there is a ketogenic diet that's a therapeutic kind of eating plan um, that's helped to treat oct um, epilepsy and, and different conditions. But for diabetes, um, ADA just um, produced a consensus report with a group of experts and what they found is the effective eating plans that are low carb are not as low as you'd think. Um, they amount to somewhere around 26% of your calories from carbohydrates in a day, um, which is probably closer to 40, 50 grams a day for a lot of people, which is really not what you think of as very low carb and that was on the very low carb end. It sounds like from what I'm hearing though, there's not one approach for everyone. It's a case by case basis, is that right? Absolutely. Um, We've, what we're finding now is that really the diet that works best is the diet that's going to work best for you as an individual. So whether that be maybe a, a very low carb eating plan or someone um, who maybe is a little bit more active might need a little bit more carbohydrate, um, whatever's going to make them feel good, help sustain their weight loss goals or um, maintain their weight um, and their blood glucose values um, while ke keeping them in line with their cultural preferences and their, you know, any food allergies or anything that they have. Have you reached a consensus on this, on what is the best nutrition? Is there a, a, a complete consensus or is it still out there, the discussions? I think the discussions are out there in terms of people want a quick fix. So it would be easier to say this is what everyone should do, I think. But the research is, you know, when you look at research, it's sort of in ideal circumstances. And then when you go to implement that in real people living with lots of other things going on, other health conditions, socioeconomic status, you know, just life gets in the way. And so when you're in a research study, it's you're following this diet very strictly for the most part. But then you get it onto life and it just doesn't always work. You gotta so, talk about sustainability, yeah. right? So um, as educators, that's something that we're really passionate about is making something that is realistic and achievable for you as a patient and making that sustainable. Otherwise, it's not gonna last. And let's talk about that uh, bad topic, fad diets. How do you how are you challenged with that? How do you explain that that's not the route to go? And obviously I wouldn't assume there is one that works. Not necessarily. I mean, I, my approach though is when someone comes to me as a patient, I'm thinking if they're really motivated to do something, I'm going to find a way to make it work. Because people come and say, I want to do the ketogenic diet, or I want to come and do this or that, whatever the fad diet is. But then when you ask them, what does that mean to you? you get a very different picture and usually we can balance out something that's very much more realistic and sustainable. And when it comes down to it, we want the best results. So what is the impact on having good nutrition on type 2 diabetes? What are we seeing? Good nutrition equals a healthy outcome. I think good nutrition equals a satisfied and a healthy individual, right? Um, an individual who um, is getting all the nutrients they need, probably hopefully is at their weight goal, um, is at their blood glucose value goal. Um, they find that it's achievable, they're not stressed out by food. Um, they're not planning several meals, you know, during the day, I eat this and my family eats that. They can, they can interact with family and, and be happy in their life. 
as well. Yeah, it's, it's realistic for them, it's sustainable for them, and I think that is the mark of um, quality of life, and that's, gonna, that's what we're looking for in the treatment of diabetes. And that's the bottom line. How do you both feel about things now? Are you enlightened? Are you seeing positive effects? I think we're constantly learning every day. That's something that I tell my patients. I learn from, from them just as much as I'm going to learn from the scientific papers that get published. Um, hopefully those are good representation of what we're seeing day to day in practice. Um, and you know, hopefully we can also learn from that evidence and help our patients in their daily, daily lives. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you both and listening and talking with you here. And thank you for being at the conference. And thank, thank you. you for taking the time. Appreciate it. ADA TV is brought to you from the American Diabetes Association 79th Scientific Sessions. For more from the meeting, make sure to click these links and subscribe for much more from the world of medicine.